Mitch, is it really true you're retiring? Who? Mitch. He's a realtor that is retiring. Oh. Oh, the guy that hugs everybody. <laughs> is that That's the point. Yeah, and I've never got a hug from him. I have never had a hug. Have you had a hug? Mitch, I've only had a hug from you. I've never been introduced to you. <laughs> oh, I don't even know if I know who he is. Of course, I'm one of your designated huggers or huggy. You better keep coming in because I don't know who's going to replace you. Nobody can. Fred said he'd try, but just not the same. You'd better stop by here frequently because all of us will still need your hugs. Remember, they're good for our blood pressure. Well, I think we should sign a complaint. This is ridiculous. We're tributing, but he doesn't hug everybody. That seems fair. And we don't. We're just down the hall, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we're in the same building. You'd think he could hug us daily. I hear about it all the time. We're going to miss you. That's so. Are you absolutely sure you need to go? I thought it'd be sort of appropriate just to ask him. I mean, I'm sort of curious myself. Um, what's going to be the hardest thing for you leaving that, uh, this office? He said, uh, what really speeded up this process of me um, deciding on retiring is I really have uh, started to have a problem with gas. And he said, I didn't really notice it until um, I went to give uh, one of my hugs one day and I'm thinking, oh, no, I got to be careful here so I don't squeeze too hard. And lo and behold, I gave a nice big squeeze and it was uh, one of those experiences like that that uh, you just don't want to uh, experience again. So he said, knowing that every day I give and get my hugs, he said, I start a process of going out the back door uh, over there by Madeline's office. And I made sure I didn't go out too far so Madeline would watch me. But he said, I had to go out there to make sure that um, when I gave my hug the next day, or that, that day I wasn't going to be gassed up. So I'd stand out there and uh, just let it rip, you know. And, uh, you know, like, like that. And uh, before I came back in, I got up to the door and made sure I was pretty well exhausted and I'd do it again and I felt good. But I mean, I, I can't let the girls know this because it's, uh, you know, sort of confidential and I don't think they'd really appreciate knowing about it. He always like goes outside and he'll just stand around and he'll like look up at the sky. I don't know, he must be bird watching or something, but he'll come back in and he'll be like all smiles. But he does it like every 10 or 15 minutes, so I don't know what's going on. Well, Mitch, it's hard to believe that we've come to this point in our careers together. Uh, we go back a long ways and you've always been my hero in real estate. I remember when Nick and Russ first asked me to come join the Century 21 office on Kirby. Uh, got to come into your office and meet you. I remember seeing you and Ann Rao in sharing a room together and you introduced me to the squirrel that you used to feed from the windowsill and I thought this guy is just something else. I also remember the time when Madeline, her assistant at the time, and Bill and I were having lunch and I was admiring the new hair color that the assistant had done over the weekend. And she told me that it was this wonderful shade called Light Ash Blonde. And Bill said, Light Ash Blonde? Well, we laughed until we cried. Mitch, this is your uh, good friend and coworker, Doug. I wanted to wish you uh, congratulations on your much anticipated retirement. Uh, for all of you that know me as Brad, just go, go along with it. Ever since I came here from Coldwell Banker and 2000, Mitch uh, looked at me and messed up my name and called me a Doug and I politely pointed it out even though I do have a, a pretty uh, uh, notable practice of respecting my elders especially when they're veterans and I said well my, my name's Brad and he says well you look like a Doug and again respecting my elders especially the ones that fought for our country and, and everything I said okay that'll work. I had the um, honor, I guess, of being located first directly across the hall from Mitch and Jean, and then um, being right up against the same wall. So as you can imagine, I learned a number of ways of how to speak to my buyers, my sellers, all through those valuable phone conversations that the door never even needed to be open. 
I did learn right up front that um, I didn't have the right vocabulary to work with Bill, and so I could see I was going to learn some, some new words. Bill Mitchell would get on his phone, and all of a sudden, some of the choice words were probably Um, goodbye. So one of my favorite Mitch stories, which happened just in the last couple of years, is um, you know Jean Belt worked for him for years and years and years, so they know each other very well. This is long after she was no longer working for him, and Mitch was walking through the office building one day and saw through a closed conference room door, saw through the, the window in the door, that Jean was in there with somebody. Didn't matter to Mitch who it was or what was going on, he decided that it was time to, to uh, wreak a little havoc. So Mitch pops the door open unannounced, sticks his head into the room, he turns on this this earnest, confused look with a switch, which I'm really jealous that he's able to do that. So he, he pops open the door, sticks his head in the room, furrows his brow, kind of surveys the room for just a second, and says to Jean, who as it turns out was in a client meeting, and it was the first time she'd met with this client, looks around the room for a second and then says, well say, Gene, I, I guess this must be good news. I, I guess congratulations is in order because you must have gotten your license back. Gene reacted um, by slamming the door to that room on Mitch so hard that people three offices away thought that a car had run into the building. I remember back in, uh, must have been when I first got in the business, 86, 87, 88, you and I were like trading uh, deals. I would sell one of your listings, you would sell one of mine. Uh, it's always a privilege and an honor uh, to uh, have a transaction with you. Uh, we're going to miss you around the office. Uh, we certainly appreciate your service uh, to our country and the example that you are as being, being a good red-blooded American. And uh, it's always funny to hear your jokes and uh, like I said, it'll be, it'll be uh, It'll be different around the office without you, and we appreciate you, and uh, we just wish you well and your wife, and hope you have great things to do in your retirement. Well, so. I recall back in the early 80s, Mitch gave me a call and was a bit concerned about uh, moving to the new Schumacher Taylor office. Uh, he was concerned about uh, going from a small office to a larger office, and I said, well, Mitch, you know, the Taylor boys, they know exactly what they're doing. I don't think you're going to have any problems. So uh, just go with the flow, and, and I think you'll be uh, satisfied, and you don't have to move someplace else. And the rest is history. Hey, Mitch, congratulations on retirement. Uh, I'm hopefully not too far behind you. You've got a few years on me, but uh, it's getting close. And I uh, found out my wife's going to keep your wife busy for a while, so uh, she'll, she'll be out of your way once in a while. Uh, congratulations, Mitch. Uh, we're sorry to see you go. Um, how much more do I? Just, just hundred bucks. Going. Yeah, just just keep going. The how, money's in the other room. Just keep going. It's important. Uh, congratulations, Mitch, and we're sorry to see you go. Can I get paid now? Who yeah. Are let's Who are you? Oh, I'm Nick Jones. Uh, I'm a new loan officer here. Well, we're not sure of that yet. We're gonna get I'm, past the I'm applying yeah. to be a loan officer. At Midland States Bank. Uh, yeah. Can I get 50 bucks if I leave 50, now? 50, that's, that's okay. This, this interview's over. Okay. Uh, I do remember when we were still Century 21 and we were housed up in the office across the street to the east of Hessel Park. Because the park was across the street, there were a lot of squirrels that inhabited that park and would kind of drift over around our section. At some point, Bill Mitchell decided that it might be fun to see if he could lure a squirrel up to the window and feed him peanuts, shelled peanuts. And I do remember then, two or three weeks later, walking into the office, and on his desk was this squirrel and a bunch of peanut shells, and he had lured the squirrel inside on his desk and was feeding the squirrel peanuts and the, he stopped feeding the squirrel, and then the squirrel went back out the window, and Bill shut the storm and the, and the wind, inside window, and it wiped all the peanut shells off of his desk and threw them away. I said, I don't think you should be doing this. I don't think this is wise. And he just kind of laughed. 
Well, not too long after that, Jim Waller came with an offer, and he came up to the back door, and that squirrel that Bill Mitchell had tamed start, came up and kind of drew closer and closer to Jim Waller. And all of a sudden, the squirrel ran up his pant leg, up the, his, the back of his coat, and landed on his shoulder and started kind of got his tail around one way, his head around the other way, and Jim was, get off, get off, the squirrel is attacking me, the squirrel is attacking me. And, and with that, <laughs> then we all realized the squirrel was far too tame, and Bill had to quit feeding the squirrels. Experiences When I moved to Remax Realty Associates about uh, 10 years ago, is I've, um, I was assured when I moved over here, you know, that this was a top-notch operation that agents operated really according to only the highest of standards. And I didn't know Mitch well at all. Um, and so we were at a Wednesday morning business meeting. The room was absolutely packed. Bill Craig was talking about um, some subject having to do with training or professional standards. And Mitch, um, this wasn't the subject, but it was incidental to what Bill was saying. And Mitch stops and interrupts and puts up his hand and furrows his brow. and completely convincingly pulled off this confused old man act that I totally bought. And he says, now, Bill, do you mean to tell me that there's some sort of a form we're supposed to use for dual agency? And I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is, how in the world can this man still be practicing real estate? It was probably at least weeks, maybe months, before I realized that Mitch was uh, sharp as a tack and that that was totally a joke and that he was able to do a complete deadpan delivery, which I'm incapable of. I'll miss helping you with that silly computer with all of its bugs, although afterwards we always ended up with lots and lots of hugs. Stories you tell that make me cry with laughter, but again, we always end with hugs right after. What will we do with all the extra French vanilla creamer? By the way, I always thought it was suspicious that you love French vanilla creamer. So I guess with all that's left to say is... Congratulations and good luck. Good day, mate, and I'll see you when I get back. Hope you come back every day. I told you that all the ladies here need the hugging. From your coworker, Doug, congratulations, Mitch. Wish you well and you better just come see us. Good luck to you. Thanks, Bill. Enjoy your retirement. We're going to miss you. Happy retirement. Mitch, have a great uh, retirement, but please feel free to come in. Everybody here at Remax has enjoyed knowing you. Colonel Mitchell, Mitch, we salute you. Just know it will never be the same around here without you. And we all really do love you. So salute and I know this is supposed to be you know, a celebration of Mitch. For one, I, I'll be glad to have the guy out of the office. It's, it's the hugging. It's constant. I can't keep the man's hands off of me. And for an old guy, he's fast. So, Mitch, good luck in your retirement. I hope you find what you're looking for, man. But for me to be able to walk through the office without feeling his eyes on me will be, it'll be a welcome relief. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't keep going. 
light-ass blonde. I'd do it again, and I felt good. 